Good evening, councillors. Uh, we will commence the meeting with the prayer. May we, the councillors of Karingai, always be aware that decisions we make affect the daily lives of those we represent. May we make these decisions with knowledge and goodwill, respecting the views of others, and may we show ourselves worthy to follow in the footsteps of those who have protected the special qualities of Karingai for over a hundred years. Amen. On behalf of Council, I recognise the traditional custodians of the land and pay tribute to Elders past mm. and present. Before we commence with the agenda, I would also like to outline a few things um, regarding the COVID-19 situation. So firstly, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Karingai Council's March 2021 Council meeting. Due to the COVID-19 situation, this Council meeting will be held remotely. Before the meeting begins, I'll outline a few points regarding this evening's proceedings. During the meeting, councillors will appear on screen. Staff will only appear on screen if questions are directed to them by the council. Tonight's meeting will be live streamed on the council website at www.krg.nsw.gov.au slash live stream. The webcast of the meeting will remain on the website. The live stream will commence once the Mayor is seated and will cease if Council goes into a confidential session where the public and the press are excluded, pursuant to Section 10A of the Local Government Act. Council meetings will remain open to the public online, but speakers now address the Council through the monthly public forums and not at Council meetings. Again, due to the COVID-19 situation, the public forum preceding this council meeting did not occur as normal. However, the public were encouraged to send in video, audio or written submissions. For more information about addressing council during COVID-19, please visit our website at www.krg.nsw.gov.au. All present tonight must refrain from engaging in disorderly conduct, publicly alleging breaches of the Council's code of conduct or making other potentially defamatory statements. Councillors and Council staff must declare and manage any conflicts of interest they may have in relation to any item of business that is the subject of the meeting agenda this evening. So we will now commence uh, with apologies. Are there any council apologies? General Manager, are there any staff apologies? Uh, Madam Mayor, Director Myersick is on leave and Mr Garland is Acting Director Development and Regulation this evening. Thank you. Councillors, are there any declarations of interest on tonight's agenda? Uh, I will make one declaration, as I have previously, uh, with regard to 6 Springdale Road, Kalara, GB11, in that I previously lived next door to this property, but that was uh, over four or five years ago now. Uh, I do not know the current owners. So I do not believe there is any conflict and I will be remaining in the meeting for this item. Uh, General Manager, are there any staff declarations? There are none, Madam Mayor. Thank you. General Manager, documents circulated to councillors, please. Uh, Madam Mayor and councillors, just the late MM3, which is Joe Harris, 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Karingai. Thank you. And General Manager, would you please list the reports to be considered in closed meeting this evening? Madam Mayor and Councillors, one report and a number of attachments. We have item C1, Council Land Holding Strategy. Uh, the report itself, GB6, which is RFT 12 2020, um, attachments one and two, GB7, RFT 13, attachments one and two, and GB8, RFT 14, attachments one and two. Thank you. Councillors, I seek a motion that those materials remain in confidential. 
moved yeah. Councillor Clark, seconded Councillor Chateau. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Uh, we move to confirmation of the minutes and I seek a motion to confirm the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council held on the 16th of February, 2021. Moved Councillor Chateau, seconded Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That is unanimous. We move to minutes from the mayor and there are three minutes this evening. MM1, Vale Dr. Barbara Robin Walker. It is my sad duty to inform my councillor colleagues and the Karingai community of the untimely passing of Dr. Barbara Walker. Barbara was born on the 6th of March, 1952 and became a passionate supporter of the values of Karingai. Her death on 27th of January, 2020 was deeply mourned. I have only recently become aware of Dr. Walker's passing, and I think it's important to commemorate her significant contribution to the Karingai community, particularly in the Roseville area. Since moving to Karingai in 1994, Barbara embraced her garden together with the heritage and ambiance values of Roseville and other parts of Karingai. Joining with other passionate Roseville residents, she helped form the Archbold Estate Roseville Incorporated and worked consistently over many years to achieve the heritage conservation area status. This involved many presentations to council, contributions to the council heritage committee and consultation on many development proposals and zoning studies. The informative plaque at Furs Cottage, Clanville Park, and the Rose Roseville Railway Station rollover boards in Sula Soleil within Furs Cottage are other examples of the Archbold Estate contributions to the area. Barbara was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1998, a life-changing moment. However, she tackled the disease and appropriate treatment with determination and optimism. The untiring efforts of the Mater Hospital team and her oncologist, Professor Fran Boyle, were always greatly appreciated and contributed significantly to her survival of metastatic disease for so long. She valued her family life and many enjoyable school holidays were spent with her husband, Bruce, and children, Alice and Cameron traveling to many and varied parts of Australia. Barbara turned some of her leisure time to painting at the Karingai Arts Centre in Roseville. Watercolours, pastel and oils were all tried and she left a wonderful gallery of her works, which family and friends now treasure as a, member of her, as a memory of her talents. She worked as a GP in DY throughout retiring from work in 2015 to help look after her father, Bob Ockenden. The legacy of Barbara's many interests and achievements will be gratefully remembered by many and council will certainly miss the important advocacy role she undertook for the Karingai community. It was a privilege to know Barbara, to share her passion, knowledge and dedication for Roseville and to witness her tireless commitment to protecting its values and cherished character. We thank you for your life of service that has enriched our community. Our sincere condolences to Bruce, Alice and Cameron on the sad loss of their wife and mother and to her many friends across Karingai who will miss her dearly. I move that A, the mayoral minute be received and noted B, that we stand for a minute's silence to honour Dr Walker and C, the Mayor write to Dr Walker's family and encloses a copy of this mayoral minute. I invite any councillors who wish to make comment at this point. Councillor Nye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it is quite sad to hear of the passing of Barbara Walker. I've only known her for three years, but in the three years that I've known her, I know that 
some of her artwork has been quite fantastic. We've had the opportunity to look at it and discuss at the Roseville Arts Centre. I also know that Barbara Walker has been quite helpful in helping me understand some of the history behind why we have heritage conservation areas in Roseville and Linfield particularly. So um, it is a big loss for the Roseville area and I wish the best to her family. Thank you, Councillor Nye. Uh, and it's uh, quite amazing that despite her health diagnosis all those years ago, uh, she remained um, absolutely committed to her community work. And uh, we certainly have uh, benefited from that over so many years. We'll miss it in the future, um, but I'm very pleased that the council and our community can recognise her incredible contribution at this time. Um, I will now put that mayoral minute, all those in favour, that is unanimous. Councillors, if you would please stand for a minute's silence. Please be seated. I will also mention that um, Bruce Walker uh, is uh, committed to doing his best to preserve Barbara's legacy uh, with his own actions and his contribution to Eraldine and the Camellia Society. So um, we thank the family very much for doing so. Uh, we move to MM2 now. Uh, Penny Howe, 2021, Local Woman of the Year for Davidson. This week, St Ives resident Penny Howe was announced by our state member for Davidson, Jonathan O'Day, MP, as the 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Davidson. Penny is a tireless community worker with many strings to her bow, working in community radio on Northside Radio 99.3 FM and is past president of St Ives Football Club and currently Special Projects Officer. Many community forums have been organised in St Ives by Penny, including Meet the Candidates during the last local government elections and most recently a local traffic Forum for St Ives. She is an active member of the St Ives Community Facebook page, sending out helpful and insightful information to local residents. Penny is an informed and proactive community member, and it is important to recognise the value of community workers, as Council does every year in our Australia Day Awards. As the 2014 recipient of the Davidson Local Woman of the Year, I'm proud to be in the same cohort as Penny and other past recipients, including Kathy Cowley from Folk and Namoy Dougal from Kids. The past year's challenges of dealing with the pandemic have shown more than ever the importance of community around us. These women are examples of the generosity and compassion within our neighbourhoods. Community service is vital to the fabric of our society and encouraging our young people to get involved with volunteering at an early age is an important thing to instill, just as my parents did for me. These recipients have all had a long involvement with volunteer organisations that serve our local community every year, and Karingai is the better for it. It is timely with this award as part of the International Women's Day that I continue to encourage women to stand for council in the upcoming September 4th elections. 
The Algwa New South Wales is supporting councils to hold forums for prospective women councillors in the coming months. And I have asked staff to organise one for Karingai Council. So I move that A, this mayoral minute be received and noted. B, the mayor writes a letter of congratulations to Penny Howell on behalf of council. And I invite any councillors to make comment now. And Councillor Kelly has his hand up first. Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, I think that this uh, document needs some amendment. Um, before it's put out to these, uh, to, um, anyhow. Um, if I was to suggest that in the first mayoral minute, my daughter and my two sisters who passed away as a result of cancer were featured, most reasonable people would find that inappropriate and would consider it grandstanding on my part to draw sympathy from uh, the passing of Dr. Barbara Walker. In the same way, in this uh, uh, mayoral minute, I think the uh, fourth paragraph and the last paragraph are entirely inappropriate. They do nothing to enhance the, uh, the recognition of Penny Howe, and all they do is serve to um, feature people who are not the recipient of the 2021 Local Woman of the Year Award, and the, the issue about Alga, New South Wales has got nothing to do with Penny Howell's award either. And I think it's most inappropriate that those two paragraphs are included in the document. Thank you. The next speaker is Councillor Kay. Okay, thank you. So I would just like to um, thank the Mayor for putting this mayoral minute together. I think it's important to acknowledge the 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Davidson, which is Penny Howe. I think it's actually remarkable women should be recognised for the work that they do in their community. They represent the true meaning and spirit of community and, as mentioned, work tirelessly to do that. Penny Howe has been an active advocate for her community of St Ives and, as with most volunteers, her work has been endless. Now, I just wanted to add a couple of other activities that I know personally that Penny has been involved in. And one of the many activities, she's done a lot of fundraising for the RFS and including the annual Karingai Bushfire Brigade Catherine Street Santa Run, which I was fortunate enough to be involved with pre-COVID. Now, I also wanted to acknowledge and add Julia Eagles to the list, which happened to be the Davidson 2016 Woman of the Year. Um, and she's done a lot of work within Neighbourhood Watch. And I feel privileged to have met the women mentioned today and that they do make our community a better place. And thanks to all the women past and present who have self selfishly served our community. And obviously a special thank you to Penny Howe um, being one of my residents. It's an absolute privilege for being Local Woman of the Year for 2021. So well done to all women. Thank you. And Councillor Nye, you are next. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to propose a slightly, well, a different motion. And I'm asking if the council staff can bring it onto the screen. So this is a motion which I hope that the majority can support. So point A, that Council acknowledges Penny Howe's contributions to the community at Northside Radio 99.3 FM, at St Ives Football Club as the past president and current special projects officer, and as an organiser of various community forums for St Ives. Point B, the Mayor write, writes a letter of congratulations to Penny Howe on behalf of Council. Uh, Councillor Nye, you don't want to formally receive and note the mayoral minute as well? Um, no, we'll just replace that with the new A. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Is there a seconder for Councillor Nye's amendment? Councillor Spencer has seconded that. Uh, Councillor Nye, do you wish to speak to this? Oh, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, so first of all, I'd like to yeah, congratulate Penny for 
getting this award, 2021 Davidson Woman of the Year. I've only known Penny for about two years, but during the time that I've known her, I've seen that she's been an active contributor to the St. Ives community page. Um, I saw that she was heavily involved with organizing the St. Ives candidate event about two years ago. Um, and through the few interactions that we've had with her, including some recent Facebook posts and also an email that she sent to all of us as counselors a few days ago, uh, I've always noted that Penny's been very respectful and diplomatic with everything that she does and says. So she is a very respectable person within our community. Um, having said that, I, I know some of the frustrations that, or some of the observations from some of the other councillors um, about perhaps the mayoral minute in the way that it was written. And so I, I believe that this version, this, this version of A focuses on Penny Howe's accomplishments as the 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Davidson. Um, I, I guess another point that I want to raise is it, it, it did seem a little bit odd to some people that um, when mentioning other people who had previously won Local Woman of the Year, that it focused a lot on the very past history, the early 2010s decade, rather than some more recent award winners, such as um, Julia Eagles, who Councillor Kay previously mentioned, um, Yvonne Taylor, and then some of the the Karingai ones, Michelle Bell, Bronwyn Wilson, Dr. Yvonne McMaster, Barbara Ward, Brenda Williams. Um, there, there's a lot of people that could have been mentioned. So it did seem a little bit odd for the Merrill Minute to focus on a particular few, not the most recent ones. Um, but yeah, I, I, do, I do encourage all councillors to support what was put up on screen, um, point A and B, because it does focus on congratulating Penny Howe for what she has achieved um, for the community as a whole. And I do believe that it's something that we could unanimously support. Thank you. Councillor Spencer is seconder. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, I've worked with uh, Penny, at, sorry, uh, Penny uh, for the last six months organising this town hall uh, meeting at St Ives uh, in relation to traffic and she has been a very efficient worker and she is um, she's well deserved to uh, receive this uh, award. And with regards to Julia Eagles, I've worked with her uh, many, many years ago um, in the Neighbourhood Watch. Uh, and I hope everyone would uh, support this version of the um, amendment, sorry, the mayoral minute. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I might make uh, some comment uh, now myself uh, in respect to my opposition of the amendment uh, and to explain a few things. Uh, at the time that the council business papers went to press, we did uh, not have uh, in receipt of the council notification of the Karingai Woman of the Year. You will note that that has since come in and we have a late mayoral minute, MM3, which is for the Karingai Woman of the Year. Uh, hence, uh, the women that were mentioned that were well known uh, to many of us as examples in MM2 were Davidson Women of the Year. Uh, we have only been um, working on the MM3 for the Karingai Woman of the Year, finishing that today. Uh, and we have a lot more information uh, with regard to um, Joe Harris's involvement. Uh, councillors are well at liberty to mention um, any other Karingai Women of the Year uh, that they wish to when um, making comments with regard to these mayoral minutes. I do feel it's quite a shame for some of the men on this council to want to hijack a mayoral minute recognising women in the community, their contribution to Karingai and beyond, and to try and change the format that has been used for years 
uh, in receiving and noting mayoral minutes. The points raised in part A of the amendment are already dealt with in the body of the mayoral minute. So the recipient will receive all of this. But I can assure you- Point that of order. Point of order, Councillor Spencer. There's nothing in our speeches that suggests gender. That is not a point of order, Councillor. Yes, Spencer. it is. It's you not. said the men hijacked. Yes. You know, we were male... referring to Penny how, Penny, Penny how? That is not a point of order. And we, we mentioned Julie Eagles. You must remain silent, Councillor Spencer. No, no, no. Not a point it's a of point order. of order. No. You are out of line, Madam Mayor. No, Councillor Spencer, you are out of line. No, I'm, I'm not. That, that is not a point of order. It is a point I would of ask order. You to respect the chair and remain silent now. It is quite legitimate for women in our community to be encouraged to stand for local government. And indeed, our Minister for Local Government is a woman and is being actively um, engaged with the New South Wales communities across all council areas to encourage women to stand for council. And she has taken many opportunities to bring that to the fore. And I think recognising the contribution in our community of individual women, both past and present, is absolutely a legitimate occasion to encourage women to stand for election and to also note some of the women that have made outstanding contributions in the past. Uh, so therefore, I think we should uh, stick with the existing format that covers absolutely everything uh, that we should encourage and note in terms of Penny's wonderful contribution to Karingai and its community. Uh, so I oppose the amendment. Uh, the next speaker, Councillor Spencer, have you got your hand up to ask a question? Yes, a uh, question to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, which part of the amendment suggested by Councillor Nine Nye suggest that the minutes be replaced by men? Councillor Spencer, that is not a question that has it is a question. to do with the comments that I have made. Is there another question? Yes. Which, which part, A or B? Councillor Spencer, I reject your question. Are there other speakers on this amendment? Don't make a suggestion if, you know, you can't. You must remain silent, Councillor Spencer. You've had your turn. If the next speaker, I believe, is Councillor Clark. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to briefly speak against uh, this amendment. Uh, it's, it's very confusing why a group of councillors are attempting to uh, hijack a mayoral minute. It's very standard that mayoral minutes uh, be received and noted. It's very confusing, this weird argument over who is and who isn't being acknowledged. If you're trying to draw a list of literally every single person who's being acknowledged um, in these awards, it'd be pointless. You know, we're, we're picking out... A, selection of individuals who might be known to the community. It's not an exhaustive list, um, as I believe Councillor and I um, effectively implied that it was exhaustive, um, which is not. Clearly, it's not. There's a huge amount of incredible women within our local government area. Um, and I think Councillor, oh, sorry, Madam Mayor, uh, Councillor Anderson's uh, original motion adequately covered that. Um, yeah, I don't see any need for this particular amendment. It's very confusing. And it really just feels like an attempt by two councillors to hijack the mayoral motion, mayoral minute. So I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Are there any other speakers on this mayoral minute? If not, I will firstly put the amendment before us, which is Councillor Kelly's amendment. All those in favour? Sorry, Councillor... Uh, Nye, Councillor Nye's, Nye's amendment. amendment. Councillor Nye's amendment. All those in favour? That is Councillor Nye, Councillor Kelly, Councillor Spencer. Against? Uh, Councillor Chateau, Councillor Kay, Councillor Smith. Councillor so, sorry, Madam Mayor. Um, there was Councillor Pettit. 
Councillor Pettit, were you, sorry? Were you for or against the amendment, Councillor Pettit? Oh, it's disappeared completely. Okay, we might just see if we can get Councillor Pettit back. I think when he unmuted, he might have accidentally disconnected. It did look like he was playing around with a web camera. We could we could count the against and then come back to Councillor Pettit to clarify. Um, yeah, we might might do that. He still seems to be missing. Uh, just check with staff. Not, not, okay, he doesn't seem to be um, able to reconnect. Uh, may I ask the general manager uh, for advice on what we should do at this point? Madam Mayor, if a council is not in the room or doesn't take part in the vote, the, the court is voting against. Uh, Councillor Pettit, just seems like he's connecting again. Councillor Pettit. There we go. There we go. Count, thank you, Councillor Pettit. Uh, could we just clarify, are you for or against the amendment? For the amendment. For the amendment. Yep. Thank you. So that was Councillors Pettit, Councillor Kelly, Councillor Spencer and Councillor Nye. Against is Councillor Shoto, Councillor Kay, Councillor Smith, Councillor Clark and Anderson. Is that everyone that I've listed? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. That amendment is lost. We resume debate on the mayoral minute. Councillor Nye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to speak against the motion. Thank you, go right ahead. Okay, so I do note the comments made by a number of councillors earlier in this meeting about um, it being unfortunate that something's been hijacked. And I do agree that if something has been hijacked, then it, it, it is quite unfortunate and potentially inappropriate. Now, the, the, the heading of this Merrill Minute, MM2, before me is Penny Howe, 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Davidson. So if I read something that's about Penny Howe, the 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Davidson, then I expect the vast majority of the Merrill Minute to be about Penny Howe and not about other topics. Now, I, I don't object necessarily to some of the other content here in the Merrill Minute, but I, I just feel that this other content has hijacked the focus, which really should be on Penny Howe. Um, this, this isn't like if, if the heading of this Merrill Minute was different, if it was Penny Howe 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Davidson and a call for women to be more active, involvedly involved in the community, and a note that the local government elections are, are coming up, so please run. And by the way, we support Kathy Cowley and Namor Dugal, but we're not going to mention a few others like Yvonne Taylor, Julia Eagles, and a few others from the area and around the time. Then, okay, fair enough. But because the particular title here is Penny Howe, and the topic is Penny Howe, I genuinely do want to honour Penny Howe in that way. And I don't want to get sidetracked. I don't want this to be hijacked just because we're six months away from an election. Um, I, I do support women's participation in the community. Um, I, I've, out of all the people here, I've named the most number of Davidson and Karingai winners of Women of the Year awards. I've done my research. I appreciate the contribution. Um, I've spoken already about how Penny Howe has been respectful in all that she does. Um, I get this feeling that I will be misrepresented after this meeting for a lot of things that we've said. And I would encourage anyone who hears about the misrepresentation potentially to come back to this, this video and see for yourself, read the Merrill Minute, look at the video, see for yourself, what is the topic that we are discussing here? Is it really about Penny Howe or is it being hijacked for multiple purposes? Um, I, I really do want to support something that is for Penny Howe, but because it's become Penny Howe and by the way, a whole bunch of other things, 
that makes me a bit uncomfortable and yeah that that's all i've got to say at this point in time so thank you for your time everyone councillor clark your next speaker uh thank you madam and i'll just be very briefly for this motion i suppose also address some comments um penny howe has clearly shown in this motion has been a woman who has been heavily involved within local politics organizing meet the candidate uh, areas during the last election um, I don't see really any issue with mentioning elections and women given especially her involvement in local politics um, as a woman um, I don't think that we should have a competition between councils of who can name the most important women um, in a list cool great that's not a competition I think we should have. And also a suggestion, Council and I, I don't think you should ever name um, Meryl Minutes. They're too long un under your naming scheme. Uh, either way, uh, yes, I support the motion um, as printed and um, committed to hope it goes through. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will reiterate in response to Council and I that uh, this Meryl Minute was about the Davidson Woman of the Year and councillors who want to mention Karingai Women of the Year from the past are more than able to do so uh, in MM3, and I would certainly encourage that. Uh, we have many women that are known to individual councillors, and I readily acknowledge that the councillors uh, from the northern um, wards uh, may well have more familiarity with the uh, women in the uh, Karingai State electorate who have won these awards as opposed to my familiarity with the women in the southern wards of Karingai in the Davidson electorate. Um, it's a, a shame if any um, men wish to limit comments made about either individual women, women in politics, women getting involved in local council, women standing for election. Um, and encouraging that. Point of order. Uh, Councillor Kelly, point of order. Madam Mayor, the comments weren't made, certainly in my case, about singling out women. It wouldn't matter whether there was a list of men there being mentioned in addition to Penny Howell. My comments about the mayoral minute was, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a gender issue because it's the woman of the year. And good luck to her. She's a lovely lady and she's a tireless worker for the community. My comments weren't about gender at all, even though I spoke out quite uh, um, stridently about the uh, things that I think shouldn't be in there. <clears throat> Obviously, it's going to be about other women in the uh, community, but my comment wasn't gender-based, and I think it's uh, quite offensive to try and run this gender argument into the comments that were made because it's inappropriate and it's absolutely wrong. Well, that is not a point of order, but uh, I'm sure we all appreciate hearing further about your views on this. But there's a, a lot of women in this council um, that are actively involved in encouraging women through a range of forums to get involved in local government and to stand for election. And I think as women, um, we want to certainly raise gender issues and so does the state government. And in doing so, they've also revealed these awards for 2021 for women. Uh, that's, that, may be, that may be right, and I appreciate that women are to be promoted to do these sort of things. I'm quite in favour of that. It's just not in a particular recognition of an award for a particular individual. If you had a mayoral minute that said, hey, let's list all the people who've done wonderful things for the community, great. This is supposed to be about Penny Howe. And the additional um, inserts into the mayoral minute, including the last paragraph, it either politicises the mayoral minute or it's pr used as a vehicle to promote other people who've won the award. This should be about Penny Howell and her Councilor winning of the award. Kelly, you've made your point. You're debating now. You've already spoken. Uh, you're interrupting. It's not a point of order. So I would ask you to remain silent while I finish my comments. I was responding to your comment, Madam Mayor. You are not allowed to respond without the call and it was not a point of order. So I will continue uh, and say that women on this council, I'm sure, and I know particular instances, are actively encouraging women to stand for local government. And this is a perfect time, as we recognise some leading examples of women in our community, 
to use that to leverage the opportunity to raise the profile of women standing for local government in September. And I'm pleased to see that there are many men on this council who support that. And I'm sure the women on this council aren't trying to say there shouldn't be men on the council either, but uh, certainly what we want is to be able to have a voice and to encourage further women to stand for local government at the same time as we recognise Penny Howe, who indeed has been very active in our community and has also arranged Meet the Candidate nights at the last council elections. So perfectly appropriate to um, join those dots. Uh, if there are no further comments, I will put that Mayor or Minute, all those in favour. That Madam is... Mayor. Madam Mayor, I do have a Oh, sorry, you have... Oh, Councillor Shadow has lost connection too. I don't know whether that was a point of order or another comment. I think she had something to say. I don't know. Uh, I can hear myself. All right, we can hear, we can hear you can now. Hear yes, oh, good. Can you right. please proceed, Kate. All I was going to say was that um, no, I'd support this mirror minute as it stands because the way in which I looked at it was it was contextualising Penny Howe's contribution um, as local woman of the year for Davidson and in particular mentioning her um, her involvement in, in politics, in local politics. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a perfectly valid reason to make that connection. It's a contextualisation. Thank you, and I'm glad we've got you back um, connected to the Zoom meeting. Councillors, I will put that mayoral minute as printed. All those in favour? Mm -hmm. That is Councillors Chateau, Kay, Smith, Clark, Pettit, Anderson against is Councillor Nye, Spencer, Kelly. That is carried. Councillors, we move to MM3, Jo Harris. 2021 Local Woman of the Year for Karingai. I'm pleased to advise councillors that Warunga resident, Mrs Jo Harris, OAM, is being celebrated with a Local Woman of the Year Award for the Karingai State Government Area in recognition of the significant support she has given to the Karingai community. An extremely valued local identity, Jo has lived in Karingai all of her life, raised her children here and has been active in a range of community pursuits. Jo has been a member of the Karingai Historical Society since 1999 and a Vice President of the Society since 2001. For 15 years, she was leader of the Family History Group and has run many successful group tours around Karingai. Jo's interests and involvement in the community are varied. She was a founder of the Taramara Stamp Club and a member of the Karingai Arts and Crafts Group, along with a local spinning group. Jo Harris was a well-deserved recipient of an OAM in the 2017 Queen's Birthday Honours List. I have had the pleasure of knowing Jo for many years and her contribution to preserving the history of Karingai is immeasurable. Her tenacious energy in research is well known. When matters of historical significance were not always clear, Jo gave generously of her time to research the answers. Maybe less well known is her skill in family history tracing, bringing long lost families together. Jo is particularly interested in the Arthur Phillip chapter of the Fellowship of First Fleeters, which meets in Gordon and shares her knowledge with this group. I've enjoyed many of those meetings as patron, especially as my husband and our children are First Fleet descendants. Joe's encouragement and support of the Arthur Phillip chapter has been much appreciated. Joe's very popular exploring Karingai tours showcased her encyclopedic knowledge of Karingai's history. In 2018, she organised impressive centenary commemorations for the 100th anniversary of the first direct wireless message from the United Kingdom to Australia on the 22nd of September 1918 from Wales to Warunga. A statue celebrates this event 
and was unveiled by the Right Honourable William Hughes, PCKC and Prime Minister of Australia, 1915 to 1923, in December 1935. Her very impressive accolades have included 1987 Taramara Rotary Community Service Award, 1994 New South Wales State Government Award for Involvement and Support During Bushfires, 2002 Karingai Council Certificate of Merit for a Heritage Written Work, 2005 Karingai Historical Society Historian of the Year Award, 2005 member on the Centenary Committee for Karingai Council Celebrations, 2006 Mayor's Centenary Award, 2008 Karingai Citizen of the Year, 2009 Royal Australian Historical Society Certificate of Merit, 2010 St Ives Rotary Community Service Award, 2011 North Shore Times 50 Years, 50 of the finest recognition of service to the community, 1960 to 2010. 2014, Rotary International Paul Harris Fellowship Medal. 2017, Queen's Birthday Honours Medal of the Order of Australia, OAM. 2018, Life Membership of Karingai Historical Society. Alistair Henskins, SCMP, said when awarding the honour, Joe has made a tremendous contribution to keeping Karingai's treasured history alive. I congratulate Joe on this well-deserved honour. More recently, she has been the storyteller of Karingai's history, actively promoting our local area through her involvement in the Karingai Historical Society. Please join me in congratulating Joe Harris on this significant achievement. I move A, that this mayoral minute be received and noted and B, that the Mayor write a letter of congratulations to Joe Harris on behalf of Council. And I invite comments, Councillor Spencer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've known Joe Harris during my time on Council. She is known for organising her mystery tours. I've had the uh, privilege to work with her on the centenary celebration of the wireless communications uh, in my ward, Warunga, and she worked very tirelessly to actually organize uh, the call sign Maconi 100. It was very interesting. Uh, I joined the mayor in congratulating Joe Harris uh, in receiving this award. This is truly an outstanding lady. Thank you. The next speaker is Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to save us some embarrassment, uh, William Hughes's post nominals are CHKC and not PCKC. Thank you. Uh, any further speakers? Yes, Councillor Nye. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to commend this mayoral minute to everyone in this room or in this virtual room. Um, I, I do applaud uh, the mayor for writing a mayoral minute which sticks to the topic line. And I, I do acknowledge Joe Harris OAM's contribution to our community. In fact, she's contributed much longer than perhaps some of us have even been alive. So yeah, that, that is a great accomplishment. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I will add that uh, Jo personally told me that uh, she attended the ceremony to receive her award uh, with the Premier um, in attendance and that she very much enjoyed the experience. Uh, she uh, certainly has a long list, as, uh, as you've seen, of contributions to Karingai and beyond. Uh, and I know, uh, as many of you have experienced, she continues to tirelessly serve the community to undertake research for the betterment of our local area and uh, for many individuals um, researching their family trees. Um, her knowledge is uh, quite amazing, not only of family research, but uh, also of Karingai. And anyone who's been on her tours uh, constantly uh, expresses to me that they've learnt so much about Karingai that they never knew existed. 
So um, she will certainly um, be very missed in giving those tours. And uh, I think uh, anybody who's been able to uh, join her on one of those has had a very special experience. Uh, so many congratulations to Jo, and uh, we look forward to um, many more years of her contribution going forward. Uh, I will put this mayoral minute all those in favour, that is unanimous. Councillors, uh, we move on now to petitions. Are there any petitions? Councillor Smith. Madam Mayor, I have a uh, petition. I have a petition in relation to GB9 that's on tonight. This petition is against the proposed hockey facility development at Barrow Brewery. With this petition, we've got 2,588 signatories to this petition. If you don't mind, I might just read, read the petition out. Yes, thank you. We, the undersigned, undersigned oppose Karingai Municipal Council's plan to rip up the grass oval at Barrow Brewery Reserve and allow the Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Association to turn the field into a wet-based artificial regional hockey field that denies recreational access to the local community. We want to keep Barrow Brewery Reserve as a natural grass and bushland space for the enjoyment of all residents and the protection of the existing flora and fauna. Our concerns, our concerns include, but are not limited to the following. Point one, high risk to users of the oval and local residents. The development will bring in up to 280 cars per day with 100 requiring parking. With surrounding streets being zoned E4, areas of high bushfire evacuation risk requiring clear egress and evacuation routes and in bushfire prone land. This traffic requirement will put residents and players, visitors in a danger plus limit emergency vehicle access to surrounding streets and to Barrabury Reserve itself. Point two, loss of a local, loss of a local amenity. Barrabury Oval is a much loved flat grassed recreation space the local, for the local community. The oval will be surrounded by three metre and five metre high fences. Surrounding the properties are built on sloped blocks with limited flat grass services for recreational play and exercise. Residents rely on Barrow Brewery Oval for green space. Point three, loss of a local fully fenced off leash dog park. Dogs will not be allowed to use Barrow Brewery Oval once it is a synthetic turf. The oval will be managed by Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Association, including bookings. Point four, risk of injury for users of the local of the oval due to synthetic hard impact service and increased heat, heat amplification associated with plastic surfaces. Danger to preschools and their families of existing Barrabury preschool of dramatic increase in tra traffic and hours of use of Barrow Brewery Oval associated with a regional facility using a synthetic turf oval. Inadequate road safety. Entering and exiting Burrany Avenue onto Eastern Arterial Road using the existing slip road system, Seagull Junction, is already very difficult. The increase in traffic will make it dangerous environmental threat of plastic and chemical runoff into Middle Harbour Creek, loaded, located approximately 2.5 kilometres downhill from Barra Brewery Reserve, with a smaller tributary creek running directly behind Barra Brewery Reserve, Reserve threat to the existing critically endangered Sydney turpentine ironbark forest. Duffy's Forest and surrounding bush land and Garrigal National Park flora and fauna. Habitat th threat to native wildlife. 
echidnas, wallabies, lyrebirds, cockatoos, galahs, king parrots, rosellas, bandicoots, ring-tailed possums, brown cuckoo doves, bush turkeys, and many other Australian natives all make their home at Barrabury Reserve. Their habitat is threatened by the introduction of a high-use, high-fence synthetic oval built for hockey. While we acknowledge that the Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Association deserves a dedicated space to continue to play and grow their sport, we reject that Barrow Brewery Oval is the right place for a synthetic oval or regional sports facility. Synthetic surfaces may result in longer play times for sporting associations, but their risk to users and the environment is too great especially in high-risk bushfire zones like Barrow Brewery Reserve. Recommendation that the petition be received and referred to the appropriate officer for council for attention. Uh, thank you. I think that takes the record for the longest prayer we've heard for a petition. Uh, congratulations on getting through that, Councillor Smith. So you're moving that petition. Uh, is yes. there a seconder for that? Seconded Councillor Pettit. Um, all those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith, has that been uh, tabled with the staff? Uh, yes, it has, Madam Mayor. It was um, tabled to the staff on the 11th of March. Okay. They're, they're in receipt of, of it. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Uh, councillors. Madam Mayor, can I ask a question, please? Sorry. Yes, uh, Councillor Spencer, question. Uh, were, were there, um, actually, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Smith, uh, were there addresses on the um, on the petition, the signatories? Do we have addresses for the signatories to the petition? Madam Mayor, we have. Uh, we have, there's three forms of it. It's been online. And then we've also got the petition, which actually also has addresses on it as well. Correct. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kelly, your light's on too, is that? Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, Says my battery's running low here. Am I not switched on? Sorry, we've just got a small technical hitch. Stay on it. All right. Thank you. We we're just losing a bit of power there, so uh, all rectified now. Thank you. Uh, councillors, we move to general business. I don't believe there's any other petitions. So I now invite councillors to nominate any item on the agenda that they wish to have a site inspection. Councillor Kelly. Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, GB 1033 Young Street, Warunga, please. GB 1033 Young Street. Wurunga. It's the heritage listed item. Yes, thank you. Is there a seconder for a site inspection? Councillor Kay. Thank you. Uh, I will put that. All those in favour? That is. Councillor Chateau, Kay, Spencer, Smith, Nye, Pettit, Kelly, Anderson, against. Councillor Clark. Thank you. That's carried. Uh, just to clarify for uh, anyone watching, that means this item will not be considered further tonight pending a site inspection. Uh, are there other items for a site inspection? Councillor Nye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there is one of the sites mentioned in I agenda item C1 that I'd like a site inspection. I don't know how to discuss it without going into confidential. Okay. Um, well, I think uh, if you want to discuss it to enlighten us, then perhaps we had better move into confidential. So, yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that we move into confidential. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded Councillor Clark. All those in favour? That is unanimous. All right, councillors, we'll wait for staff to 
mic. Thank you. We're back in open session now. Uh, and Councillor Nye has asked for a site inspection for one property as discussed in closed session. Um, is there a seconder for that? Seconded Councillor Spencer. All those in favour? That is councillors Chateau, Kay, Spencer, Smith, Nye, Pettit, Kelly, Anderson against councillor Clark. That is carried. Are there any other site inspections? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we move on uh, and I invite any councillors to nominate any items on the agenda that you wish to adopt with the officer's recommendation allowing for minor changes without debate. Councillor Chateau. Um, I'll start with GB1, Madam Mayor. Business Engagement Update 2021. The officer's recommendation. Second. Sorry, do you, would you like me to read up the officer's recommendation? You could just say as printed if it's just as printed. As printed. Thank you. And that's seconded by Councillor Pettit. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you. Um, GB2, 2021 Women in Local Government Leadership Workshop. Um, the officer's recommendation, that's that any councillor is interested in attending this leadership workshop advice as a general managed by 27th of March, 2021. Seconded by Councillor Pettit. All those in favour? That is unanimous. The revised GB3, the revised delivery program, 2018 to 21, an operational plan, 2020 to 21 biannual report. Um, the officer's recommendations. Seconded. 
Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Spencer. All those in favour? That is unanimous. I do before the investment report as at 28th of February 2021. The officer's recommendation as printed. Seconded Councillor Spencer. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Uh, GB5, temporary appointment of Karinda local plan and panel members to June 2021. Officer's recommendation as printed. Seconded by Councillor Spencer. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Uh, GB6, the RFT 12 2020 facade wall eight to eight Pacific Highway Gordon. The recommendation that is in accordance with section 55 for local to accept the tender submitted by tenderer A. That is seconded by Councillor Kelly. All those in favour? That is unanimous. GB7, RFT 13 2020 stormwater drainage trips, Oliver Road, Rosewall. Um, officer's recommendation that the tender submitted by tenderer A be accepted. Seconded by Councillor Pettit. All those in favour? That is unanimous. And GB8, RFT 14 2020 Recreation Precincts St Ives Village Green. Um, the recommendation is that um, Council accept the tender supplied by tenderer A. Seconded by Councillor Pettit. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Um, do I dare to go to GB9? I think you do. I have withdrawn. 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 Uh, it's withdrawn by Councillor Kay. Here. Um, GB10, the proposed heritage listing. Um, do we wish to wait until we come back from the site inspection? Or do we rec do the officer's recommendation? I'd prefer that we wait. If it's uh, taken to comments, I'd prefer we wait until we've had a look at the property. Yes, but, we we yes. we won't be proceeding with GB10 tonight. And I, no, and I'd, I'd like fine. to withdraw number eleven, please, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Withdrawn, Councillor Kelly. Even though we haven't had it moved yet, but that's which that's save that's save some time. We have indeed, uh, Councillor Shadow. Uh, GB12 Gordon Golf um, Course Master Plan Gordon Golf Club lease. The officer's recommendation. Which Second. is the council does not initiate master planning in 2021. Seeks to negotiate a five year lease extension with Gordon Golf Club to allow continued use of the site for golf. Terms to be located, uh, negotiated by the general manager in order to protect council's interests. I just wanted to say this has been a fraught issue for some time, but because of COVID 19, very largely. Um, We've had a lot of more golf being played as well as tennis being played. And also Gordon Golf Club seems to be a much more vibrant club than it used to. I'm very happy to see that we're still going to have um, a golf club there. So the officer's recommendation. Thank you. And Councillor Pettit has seconded that first. So thank you. All those in favour? That is Councillors Chateau, Kay, Smith, Nye, Pettit, Kelly, Anderson against Councillor Clark. That is carried. GB 13, flood prone land policy and updated flood planning area mapping. The officer's recommendation. Seconded by Councillor Pettit. All those in favour? That is unanimous. And GB14, the minutes of the Flood Risk Management Committee, 16th of February 2021 meeting. The officer's recommendation is printed. Seconded by Councillor Smith. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Um, um, I'll stop there. Okay. Are there any others at this point? No. Um. Sorry, yes, Councillor Clark.
Councillor Clark. Apologies, I, I turned the microphone off. Right, so sorry, I'll play. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, item C1, Madam Media Officer's recommendation. All right, uh, that's C1, the Council Land Holdings. Is there a seconder for that? Um, just to clarify, is that C1 minus the site yes. inspection? So C1 Correct. and some. Yes. And that thing, yep. Yes, Correct. That's right, minus one that we've already voted on for a site inspection. Uh, so that's seconded by Councillor Pettit. I think you were first again. Um, all those in favour? That is unanimous. All right, uh, that uh, I think takes us to GB9, Barabrui Hockey Oval proposal. Um, Councillor Kay. Okay, I wanted to um, present an opportunity to actually speak on GB9 because it has been quite controversial in my area. Now, I wanted to highlight that Difficult decisions are always made as councillors of Kuringai. Uh, but before, be, be oh, sorry. sorry to interrupt, Councillor Kay, you need to move a motion of some kind first. Oh, okay. So I can I move the recommendation? As printed, yes. Yes, thank you. That is moved by Councillor Kay, seconded by Councillor Smith. All those, uh, sorry, um, now you can uh, speak to that uh, that motion as printed. Councillor Kay. Okay. All right. So difficult decisions are always made of, as, as councillors of Karingai, but I find decisions become more difficult when they are your own residents in the ward that you live in. I personally put a lot of effort and thought into my decision making, as I'm sure others do, as they affect the lives of current residents as well as our future generations to come. Now, after a number of meetings with residents and the Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Association, I today have made the decision to support the officer's recommendation that the proposed hockey facility does not proceed at Barrabrui Sports Ground. Now, parking and traffic being a concern, but my main concern and area is safety of my residents and the scale of the proposed facility at this site. In my opinion, the risks are too high and the impact becomes irreversible if this goes through today. There are a limited number of access roads, there is a bushfire or emergency evacuations, let alone the impacts on our environment and the potential traffic chaos. If this recommendation is adopted today, I hope the Northern Sydney Beaches Hockey Association will find another location within our local government area. There is not one resident that I have spoken with who does not agree that there is a demand for sporting facilities in the area and that hockey needs a home. I have had residents assure me that they would advocate to help the Hockey Association find another location and I consider them sincere in nature. But with the evidence and reports provided to me, along with many site inspections, this unfortunately does not appear to be a suitable location. I understand the frustrations that the Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Association may experience and that this is connected to a state government grant with the potential risk of that grant funding being lost if another location cannot be found, especially as there's now been in the pipeline for approximately the last two years. I sympathise and will work towards finding a new location within the local government area to the best of my ability as I have always been a supporter of sporting facilities in the Kuringai area. Now, I also wanted to mention today the hard work of Director George Benassif, the Director of Operations, and the time and effort that he's put into the preparation of the recommendation and the continual calls that he has, he has taken um, for me to get updates. I have received nothing but positive feedback from all parties that have been involved in this process. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith, the seconder. Do you wish to speak to the motion? Madam Mayor, I'll reserve my right at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, are there other speakers on the motion? Councillor Chateau. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. I can see that this has been um, an overwhelmingly contentious issue, but where the majority, the vast majority of residents really didn't want to have the hockey field there on Barra Brewery. Um, and, and, you know, Council has listened to that. And, uh, and and certainly that's um, 
I think that's a that's a good outcome. And um, and of course we know that Council of Anasip always conducts these um, meetings between council uh, between council and residents um, very sanely and um, and properly. And um, I'd just like to commend the officer's recommendation and also the hard work that Councillor Kay has put into this. The next speaker is Councillor Nye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to take a step back and just comment on this general theme that, oh, first of all, I am speaking for the motion. Um, but yeah, I'd like to take a step back and just talk about the general theme of increase intensity of usage of sporting facilities across Karingai. So we know that we have more residents, they all have sporting needs. We want our residents to be healthy, to be active. Um, and it's not just physical health, it's social cohesion as well. So like I suspect many other councillors here, I do value the importance of sporting facility upgrades, um, such as Barabri or that concept. Um, having said that, when we normally come across these, and I've seen quite a number of these situations already in these first three and a half years, there's always seems to be two extreme sides. On one side, you've got the sporting groups promoting the, um, the significant benefit that this will bring to sports, um, particular, particularly women's participation in sport, and they will throw all sorts of reasons out there to support their case. And then on the other side, quite often you will have more local residents who live in the immediate area and the surrounds who, who raise all sorts of reasons as well. And the reasons usually are traffic, environmental, um, you know, like noise, acoustics, lighting, um, powerful hour, things like that, uh, bushfire safety. Uh, and, and usually what I see is both sides have very extreme opinions. Um, there's a lot of um, heat in, in the general debate in the public circle spheres. And I, I think it is unfortunate that sometimes it does come to that, um, that people are only focused on their side without taking the opportunity to go across and try to understand the other perspective. Now, that, that is something that I hope, well, I have sought to do myself as a counselor. I have sought to reach out to both sides and try to understand where they're coming from um, without making any promises necessarily. Um, and, and I can see here online, there's actually two petitions out there. There's one for Barbary to proceed. It's got 2,141 petitions, signatures right now. Um, the other online one has 1,900, but then I understand there's other paper forms out there. So you've got signatures from both sides. Um, I, I think my own perspective here is that whilst I am supportive of increased intensity of usage of our sporting facilities, um, they have to be in locations that make sense. So in this particular situation with Barbary, I'm satisfied that some aspects such as environmental, such as bushfire, um, things like that can be managed in a safe way um, under the right circumstances. But on the topic of traffic and Baranir and how do you have people coming in and out, I, I just haven't I just don't understand how that can be done in a safe manner, especially during peak hour, morning and evening. Um, I don't understand how it can be done. I, I haven't actually personally seen a solution presented that um, solves that traffic issue. So for that reason, I can't support Barbary at this point in time. Um, I, I am committed to the idea of finding an alternate location for hockey within the Kringai local government area. I think it will be fantastic, not just for people who live in the Northern beaches, but also for Kringai residents, because as we have better facilities here in Kringai over time, it will encourage more of our locals to participate in hockey. Um, but the real challenge with hockey, especially wet field, is that it's got a limited number of um, particular uses that can be used for it. And especially when you need a field at least of dimensions 70 by 100, the, it, it does make it quite challenging for a location like Barabri to support both people who walk their dogs and all of that, as, as well as people who want to play hockey and other sporting groups that can use wet fields. Um, uh, just a final comment on the topic of synthetic turf. I, I do believe that maybe one day, maybe in 50 years time, we will see a 
form of synthetic turf fat barabri and it will allow us to use it a little bit more intensively um, the technology on this is improving all the time and at the moment there are there's a hybrid technology which is five percent artificial 95 percent natural grass and that allows for a whole bunch of you know a much wider use of um, usages for the land. You can walk your dog, you can play soccer, you can do all sorts of things. Um, so I am optimistic about the future, but we're not at that point in time right now and the, the demand isn't quite there. There should be other locations. So I'm just speaking in support of this motion to find an alternate location. Thanks. Thank you. The next speaker is Councillor Spencer. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. May I start with a couple of questions, please, Madam Mayor? Yes, you may. Uh, through you, to the Director of Operations or relevant director, a uh, couple of questions. Firstly is, what will happen to the grant? Director? Uh, three minutes. That is if, sorry, just to clarify, that is if we are not proceeding with uh, Barra Brewery. <laughs> Thank you, Council Spencer, Director Nassif. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Three, Madam Mayor, um, the grant is transferable uh, to another site. Um, so at this current stay, stage, uh, the, the big grant, which is related to the construction of the synthetic field itself, um, has been confirmed um, that it is transferable. The grant that relates to the building, um, uh, which is about $500,000, um, they that is still up in the air, so we don't have a decision as to whether that will be transferable or not, and that will be pending on the outcome of tonight's meeting. Is there a uh, is there a deadline for the pitch, the, the grant for the pitch? Uh, three, Madam Mayor, not, not that I'm aware of, Councillor Spencer. Thank you. Second question, if I may, Madam Mayor, in relation to uh, the alternate site. Will the director then be working with Northern Sydney and Beaches Hockey Asso Association in locating or um, sourcing for an alternate site? Director. Uh, three, Madam Mayor, myself um, uh, and Director Watson um, will be working with the association um, and any other uh, major stakeholder required um, to find them a site within this LGA. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so I am in I am in favour of this uh, motion, uh, meaning to not proceed at uh, Barabri. I'm not in favour of this um, this development to be in Barabri um, as well because of traffic issues, and I believe I've stated that at the site inspection uh, because of number of traffic, uh, sorry, cars and all that. Uh, clogging up Berna uh, and Arterial Roads. Um, however, I'm very supportive of uh, sport in general, and I would uh, be very interested to follow up on this. Uh, and I would very much like to see our directors, uh, Bonasif and uh, Watson, uh, after assuming uh, that the... Um, this um, this um, uh, officer's recommendation is uh, passed that the directors would immediately then work with Northern Sydney and uh, Beaches Hockey Association to start looking for an alternate site and to see if the grants could be transferred there, including the $500,000 uh, for the building. Thank you. The next speaker is Councillor Pettit. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've been to the site a number of times and I'm very much in support of the officer's recommendation not to proceed at Barra Brewery. One of the first things that struck me is when you enter and exit Barra Near, it's the narrowness of the street. If you've got cars parked either side, if you try and bring down a delivery truck, that will clog it up. If you brought down a fire engine, that would block the road. Any large vehicle, with cars parked on either side, will find it very challenging to get down that particular street. And as you, you walk down to the park and you, you look at the surrounds, you, for me, it feels very much like Canoon with the netball courts, where you've got one road in, one road out. It's a narrow road. 
with the volume of people that would actually be at the hockey, they will be walking on the road as they do down at Canoon. So we can't have another Canoon built at Barrow Brewing. We need to learn by the mistakes we've made at the netball location and not replicate them here in St Ives. When I've talked to residents in that area, you just ask them what their feelings are on it. They're not opposed to the idea of a hockey centre being built, but it's just the wrong location for it. When you look at the environmental impacts and the location of it, it does not make sense to put it at that location. So I think the overwhelming number of issues at this site, it would make no sense to even try and make it to proceed and build a hockey facility at that location. For a wet field, you can't then use it for dry sports. So it becomes a single purpose location. So I'm definitely supporting that we do not proceed with Barrabury. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The next speaker is Councillor Smith. Madam Mayor, I'll be uh, speaking in support of the staff recommendation. Um, secondly, I'd like to thank um, all my fellow councillors that are here tonight that are showing the same support for this and that have listened to the residents of St Ives. It does pain me to go against a sport looking for a home, but again, what's been brought up here, one of the biggest problems has been is the parking situation at Barrow Brewery, the traffic, the loss of passive recreation area for the locals, the impact on the kindergarten. Um, hockey is a growing sport. It's basically stated it's a growing sport and it's already outgrown Barrow Brewery before, we even, before they even started, to be quite honest. Uh, the safety of our residents has got to be our biggest concern as local, as, um, local councillors. Uh, we've got to understand that residents somehow need to live around this type of um, proposal that was proposed and how that would affect the residents. So as councillors, that's something I believe that it is our responsibility to take notice of that. And I'm glad to see tonight that everybody is. The other thing is, um, I think what it's got to be looked at as well is this was potentially going to displace other local sporting groups that use this facility at Barra Brewery. And um, for instance, on Saturday morning, I just went around there to have a look at eight o'clock in the morning, a wet Saturday morning, and the car park was 90% full. And there, from what I understand, there wasn't even a sport being played. Uh, so again, I'd just like to thank all my fellow councillors um, for listening to the residents of St Ives and uh, taking that into account. And um, I certainly appreciate your support this evening. Thank you. Uh, I might just um, ask uh, Director Benass if um, a few questions because uh, in reading some of the emails that have come from residents uh, and uh, proponents for the project, objectors to it, uh, I would like to make sure that uh, those um, are highlighted in our debate tonight. Uh, and that we recognise that there have been a, a range of perspectives um, certainly um, presented to councillors and to council staff, um, both in um, written submissions and comments and emails and also the uh, consultation that the staff undertook last year. Um, Director, uh, many um, councillors tonight even have raised uh, a number of um, reasons that they're concerned about uh, the proposal, uh, whereas the staff report seemed to indicate that all the concerns that had been raised could be addressed uh, except for the parking problem. Um, but residents were um, also wondering how those uh, concerns that they had could, could be addressed, those other concerns apart from the parking. So I was just wondering if you could elaborate a bit more on how the um, large range of concerns um, could have been addressed. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, we've... Um we have uh, a push by consultants provided us advice on how to how to address 
um, uh, bushfires um, in the, with the potential um, of a fire approaching the site. Um, in the view of the, of the bushfire consultant, um, the, there is enough emergency warnings um, to evacuate the site well in advance of a bushfire approaching the, the playing field itself. Um, and the fact that it's a it's a watered down field works to its it also works to its advantage. With regards to the um, uh, the the open space and, and the, uh, taking away an open space or taking you know fencing off the site by you know with a three meter fence um, that is not correct. The the the, the site will have a fence around it. It would only be uh, I believe up to a twelve hundred high fence, which is one point two meters. Um, and it will be open for the community use outside of um, hockey playing hours. Um, with regards to um, just uh, a general traffic issues uh, through Barony, um, that was a concern that was raised in the report. Um, that is something that's difficult to manage. Um, however, it, it would be manageable under uh, the uh, council's traffic uh, uh, policy and procedures. Um, but that would need to go through any changes, any restrictions in Barony would need to go through the traffic committee. Um, and then in the residents again, would need to be consulted about any proposed changes. Um, I think I, I've pretty much addressed um, all the major issues. I think that the biggest major issue was a concern of the bushfires, um, was a concern of taking away open space from the community, um, taking away uh, open space for, for, for dog, uh, for dogs and, and dog walkers. Um, however, we've opened up another park um, for dog walkers. Um, that's, that's pretty much covers it all. So yes, you are right, Madam Mayor. Uh, the, the the reason why it is recommended that Barony, that Barra Brewery, uh, the hockey field does not proceed at Barra Brewery, is mainly due to um, the uh, parking spaces. And um, in terms perhaps of uh, the issues raised uh, by many with regard to uh, environmental aspects, safety, flora, fauna, et cetera. Madam Mayor, uh, a um, preliminary RAF has been undertaken and that, that is all manageable. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, I do want to echo Councillor Nye's comments and support him on um, some of the, the points he's raised on this and it uh, has, has been a shame, some of the, the heat as Councillor Nye referred to um, in debating this matter out in the wider community. Uh, I do think um, perhaps it's unfortunate that uh, some residents uh, seem to have a view that uh, only facilities for Karingai residents and ratepayers is legitimate to have in Karingai, uh, but um, that seems to be uh, something that um, is perhaps lost on them that thousands of Karingai residents play sport every week in facilities provided for, for our residents and many others from other local government areas outside Karingai. And those residents in those local government areas have supported facilities in their council area that serve not only their residents, but our residents and others further afield. And in fact, as councillors would know, Karingai Council is part of NESROC, the Northern um, Sid Sydney Regional Organisation of Councils, and that uh, we collaborate with all those councils to provide um, services and facilities, uh, including sporting facilities, uh, for the growing population. And uh, it's a commitment that all councils make. And we can't provide for every sporting uh, code in every council area, but we try to work collaboratively so that um, the residents of Northern Sydney have as much on offer um, with all the councils working together to achieve that. 
Um, in relation to uh, the parking, uh, I would also refer to uh, some comments from um, proponents of the facility, the hockey facility, that have raised concerns that council uh, does not have the accurate facts given to it about the um, use of parking spaces, the requirements for council uh, for uh, parking spaces for both the scouts and uh, in future uh, what would have been for hockey users. Um, I just want to point out so that everybody is aware uh, that the site we've been talking about at Barra Brewery uh, consists of a mix of uh, freehold title held by the Scouts and also a lease arrangement of land uh, with the Scouts and also the Crown. Uh, Council itself is not a party to those lease agreements. Uh, and naturally, um, this complicates the situation and uh, uh, we are not the leaseholder. Um, and I hope that the community does understand uh, that uh, that brings uh, unique challenges to this situation as well. Uh, Councillor Smith, have you got your light on for any other comments or questions? No, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further speakers on this matter? If not, I'll ask the mover uh, if you wish to sum up now, Councillor Kay. Okay, so I'll just do a brief sum up because I think we're we're all on the same page here and we all seem to be supporting the recommendation as I haven't heard anyone speak against. I believe there's been enough investigation for me to be able to make a confident decision to support the recommendation to not proceed at Barrow Brewery Sports Ground. Now, I'm sure the council staff um, will work actively towards finding another location, as I will, for the Hockey Association. Thank you. I will now put the motion, Councillor Kay's motion. All those in favour? That is, is that unanimous? Yes, Councillor Kelly, thank you. That is carried unanimously. We now move on to GB11, 11, which is the post exhibition consideration of submissions planning proposal to Heritage List 6 Springdale Road, Kalara, withdrawn by Councillor Kelly. Is there a motion, please? Yes, Madam Mayor, I'd like to um, move an amendment to the officer's recommendation, please. Now, I haven't passed this to the governance staff, but it's a very simple amendment. And um, if they could call up the recommendation on the screen, um, I'll give some direction, if that's OK. We'll just get that up. OK. Okay, so um, uh, looking at this uh, on B, uh, after the word council and before the word proceed, to insert the word not, um, remove A in its entirety, and that then becomes the new A and B. And that's it. Okay. So that um, uh, might have been an amendment to the officer's recommendation, but it's being moved as a motion, as there's no motion. I'm, hap I'm happy to have it as an amendment to the officer's recommendation, Madam Mayor, whichever way suits. Well, it is, it's being moved as a motion because there's nothing else on the floor at the moment. Okay. Um, Terrific. So is there a seconder for that, please? Seconded Councillor Spencer. Councillor Kelly, do you wish to speak to this now? 
Yes, Madam Mayor, this has been a bit of a thorny issue around since it first came up. Um, the family who occupy this house, uh, there were erroneous comments made when this came up that it was um, going to be spared from demolition and all sorts of weird and wonderful suggestions being made, which had no foundation. In fact, um, the family want to simply um, get on with um, completing some of the original design and refreshing, um, I think the wet areas, the kitchen and whatever, which is fairly reasonable. Uh, they want to put child proofing on the back deck because they have little toddlers and they want to put a front fence up to protect their, their building, the asset and also their children from any errant vehicles that might um, uh, come off the uh, intersection, which is uh, very close by. And as you know, it's, um, it's not so far from the house. So uh, Heritage, uh, this all came to a head after the family bought the house and they, they put in a, um, a DA to council to make those minor amendments and it was, uh, it was uh, rejected. Uh, and of course we had the site inspection and whatever. So um, the house is protected and I'm going over odd ground, I know, but I just want to reinforce this. The house is protected by the fact that there are listed properties each side of it and it's in an HCA. Uh, so anything that the, um, the owners, the current owners wanted to do would be scrutinized anyway. It doesn't need the extra step of uh, individual listing. Uh, and that just imposes a lot of restrictions on the family to make the minor adjustments and whatever to the property, which are entirely reasonable and do nothing to detract from the original um, design or the original build that the house uh, uh, that was made by the uh, original owner. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a minor point for us, but it's a major point for the family who live in the property and, uh, I think we're doing terrible things to their lives by uh, listing this property individually. Thank you. Councillor Spencer is seconder. No reserve, thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Councillor Clark. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I'd like to um, move an alternate motion, move an amendment, um, the amendment being the officer's recommendation, because it's a, the opposite, it doesn't have to be a foreshadowed amendment because it's the exact opposite of what this motion is. Correct, Councillor Clark, that would be a negation, you'd have to foreshadow. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to foreshadow um, the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Um, so we don't have to um, call for seconders on that. That's just foreshadowed at the moment. We continue to deal with debating uh, Councillor Kelly's motion. Uh, Councillor Nye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've got a question for Director Watson for strategy and environment. And then I'll probably direct the same question to Councillor Kelly. And the question is, um, from your understanding, what difference does it make whether it's it's not a individually listed heritage well it's not listed as a heritage item but sits in a heritage conservation area versus it being a locally listed heritage item uh, what practical differences does it make for any owner of the property is the um is the level of compliance expected much higher if it is a listed property um is it is it even harder to do any sorts of works if it is a listed item? Um, what what difference does it really make? That's I hope you understand what my question is. Director Watson. It really depends on the nature of the listing that's finally approved by council and finally gazetted. It may be that the listing in turn in in uh, includes uh, internal fit out of the building. Um, one thing that was alluded to by Councillor Kelly was that there was a DA before Council. It's my understanding that there is no DA before Council. Um, so uh, between two uh, heritage items uh, being in the vicinity of and being within the conservation area uh, does not necessarily reflect the, um, uh, the, the true significance of the building that's been alluded to in the reports that are before Council tonight. So it's fair to say there would be a higher level of uh, uh, compliance um, and it may be that it's a matter for uh, uh, the Acting Director of Development and Regulation to, to address, given that any DA would be assessed by his department. Um, but uh, 
Um, it's certainly a building that on the on the value of the face value of information before council uh, certainly warrants individual listing. Um, and and in the spirit of your question, council and I, there would be a higher level of compliance uh, for an individually listed building than uh, something within an HCA or adjacent to um, individually listed items. Um, thank you. And then I guess the same question to Councillor Kelly. Um, from your discussions with the current landowner, um, what what is their perception of what is possible? What's more harder? Is it a cost thing? Is it a they can't build a fence? What what is the actual issue? Well, sorry, have you finished? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> their issue was that they did all the right all the searches and whatever before they bought the property. Um, they absolutely love it. It's a and uh, if you visited the property, I think you did on the day of the site inspection. So it's, it's a in fact a, quite a striking building, and. Um, uh, there's all sorts of argy bargy going on about um, the council's activities uh, around this um, interim heritage order, but that's not the issue here tonight. And the thing is, the the family just wanted to complete the original design, uh, which was the um, the front fence and also to paint the facing brick, all things that are reversible, all things that are um, uh, superficial, I guess. Uh, and cosmetic more than anything else, and, but that will not change the the structure of the building, which is what the heritage uh, is, is the um, the design of, of the building and the, the, the high ceilings and all those who've seen it will understand what I mean. Um, of course, uh, as heritage buildings uh, move on and anyone who's lived in a heritage building will probably appreciate that um, some of them, uh, you know, 100 years old or what, whatever, the bathroom, the kitchen, whatever, uh, sometimes needs to be updated or refreshed to, uh, to keep with um, current or modern standards for appliances, for, you know, wiring and all that sort of stuff. And the family merely wanted to make some cosmetic changes in the bathroom or bathrooms and um, kitchen, which is quite acceptable to most... Uh, heritage properties. And my belief is from what they told me is that those changes they sought were rejected by council. Um, now, whether it was rejected because, and it was, and I, I apologize, uh, Director Watson, it was represented to me that they put in a DA to perform those works. Maybe that's not the case, um, uh, but they, uh, their request was rejected. Um, and that's what brought about their decision to contact me to clarify the situation and what options they had. And of course, we went down the, the, the path that we went down of um, site inspection and, and uh, resistance of the um, interim heritage order. Now it's possible that amongst all the to and fro that's gone on that some of the facts have fallen by the wayside, but that's my understanding of the situation. Uh, it's basically put these people's lives on hold because they don't know what they're going to do now, whether they want to continue or not, because um, they bought the house, as a lot of people do when they buy real estate. They bought the house saying, well, we'll, we'll finish the original design, which will provide make the house childproof, I guess, and um, protect our children, and we'll refresh the um, bathrooms and kitchen at the appropriate time, as most people would do when they buy a property, they look at how they would like to make it more suitable for them. Um, and these are very, very minor adjustments and certainly nothing that uh, affects the um, the bones of the building, as they say in real estate. So I'm not sure if that answers your question or not. Uh, yes, thank you, Councillor Kelly. And um, I've just got one more question for the acting director of compliance. And he doesn't have to answer this if it's inappropriate at this point in time. Um, but on page 374 it says that the owners lodged a development application on 1st of December 2020 for alterations and additions including new pool and front fence the development application is yet to be determined um, so my question is more about this development application is there anything here that um, in the DA which which the the sort of our acceptance of it would change as a result of a heritage listing, considering that it's already within an HCA. Um, I understand this question is a bit sort of chicken egg, 
horse cart, whatever, um, it might be inappropriate. So feel free not to answer it if it's not appropriate. Yeah, um, Acting Director. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, currently there is an application um, being considered on its merits at the moment. Uh, just jumping back a little bit, I concur with everything that Director Watson has said in relation to the application, uh, sorry, into the, the, in uh, relation to the heritage listing of the site. I'm not familiar with the actual application itself, I'm sorry, um, but um, there are uh, further provisions or protections, I suppose you can say, in relation to if a property is heritage listed as opposed to being located in a conservation area or adjoining or nearby a heritage item. Uh, but as to the merits of the application, um, um, uh, it's uh, it's ongoing at the moment and uh, I'm not familiar with the application, unfortunately. Right, thank you. Uh, Director Watson, did you have anything else you wanted to add there? Uh, Madam Mayor, I was going to correct my statement. Uh, Councillor Kelly is in fact correct. Um, there is, I have been advised in the last two minutes or so an application before council as uh, director acting director uh, garland has just advised so i apologize for perhaps uh, not giving the correct answer to that first question um i understand and it's not your department anyway your strategy and environment and uh, development and regulation uh but thank you for the clarification i might just ask uh, for some advice from the general manager on um, relevance uh, because we are dealing with uh, a heritage listing in uh, the business papers and uh, I'm not quite sure about the relevance of um, going into detail about a development application. So I'd just ask the general manager... Madam Mary Councillors, certainly in the past, and it remains the case that they are mutually exclusive issues. Um, so if you're dealing with a heritage item, whether or not there is a DA on foot uh, is irrelevant to that consideration. Uh, thank you for that uh, guidance. Uh, so I would please ask councillors uh, not to veer off into development application issues. Uh, that is not what we're debating on the agenda tonight. Uh, excuse me, Madam Mayor. Uh, you know, just to, may I just say, I only mentioned the DA in the context that that was what triggered the inquiry to me. I have absolutely no comment about the content of the DA. Well, um, I think we've had quite a long debate on uh, those aspects, uh, followed on from a number of councillors from it being raised. Uh, but anyway, as long as we cease that now, and I'll move to Councillor Smith as the next speaker. Madam Mayor, through you, I'm happy for one of the directors to um, weigh in on this if they feel necessary. Um, just to give um, the owners of this property the comfort that um, when you do have a heritage item, the likes of bathrooms, kitchens and quite substantial renovations can be done on these type of properties. So I think there's been a little bit of, um, it could be seen as scaremongering this evening. And I'd hate to sort of think that we've got residents out there thinking that they can't go and renew their kitchen or put a new bathroom in or, for that matter, do an extension. Um, and there's many, um, there's many of people that will purchase a property, me including, that um, had it heritage listed after I purchased it and I bought it for those reasons. And I appreciate the fact that it is something that Karingai values and that wants to see in the future. So I acknowledge that. But um, I also would uh, invite Councillor Kelly to join us at um, the Heritage Reference Committee, and we're quite happy to sort of um, give him the type of information and everything that might actually help him a little bit more on these points. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. And uh, yes, I believe uh, uh, you and uh, I are both councillors that have lived in heritage listed properties in Karingai and that the properties uh, weren't heritage listed at the time of purchase, but uh, became so subsequently. So we do have first-hand uh, knowledge and experience of these things. Um, Madam Mayor, I live in a heritage property. I don't need the uh, sarcasm, thanks. Uh, it's, it's not sarcastic, Councillor Kelly. It's just reassuring the community that there are councillors with 
first-hand experience and positive comments to make about it. Uh, Councillor uh, Smith, is your light still on? Or... I'll pull that down again, thank you. Okay, that's all right. Uh, are there other speakers on this motion we're dealing with at the moment? If not, I'll ask Councillor Kelly to sum up, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't think I need to say any more on the subject. I think I've probably worked it to death, so I'm happy to proceed. Thank you. All right. We'll put Councillor Kelly's motion. All those in favour? That is Councillors Kelly and Spencer against Councillors Chateau. Uh, are you against Councillor Kay? Oh, Councillor Kay? Not connected. Councillor Kay is frozen. Uh, oh, Night of technical on. difficulties. Councillor Kay, uh, are you voting against the motion? Oh, sorry. Can you re can you repeat that? I fell okay. off. Just, I was frozen, so I didn't hear what you said. So if you yes, can just repeat we'll, that, so I know what I'm voting on. All right. Um, we'll we'll just start again. Uh, we're putting Councillor Kelly's motion. Uh, those against were Councillor Kelly and Councillor Spencer. I have now called for, sorry, those four Kelly's <laughs> motion were Councillor Kelly and Councillor Spencer. I'm now calling for any against that motion. And those are Councillor Chateau, Councillor Clark, Councillor Smith, Councillor Knight, Councillor Pettit, Anderson and Councillor Kay, are you? I'm voting for Councillor Kelly's motion, if you don't mind. All right, so we'll add that to the fours. There are three fours and the remaining councillors were against. So that motion is lost. We now turn to Councillor Clark's foreshadowed motion. All right, very good. Uh, do I need a second now for the officer's recognition of being foreshadowed? Uh, I do. Well, all you need to say firstly is that you are moving the officer's recommendation yes. uh, and, and I presume it's as printed mm -hmm. uh, is your intention. That's seconded by Councillor Smith. Uh, so now you are at liberty to speak to that motion, Councillor Clark. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll speak very briefly to this. Um, Look, I think uh, Council Heritage Department does an excellent job and I'm happy to support them in the, in the work that they put forward in this case. And uh, I commit the motion to the floor. Uh, Councillor Smith, the seconder, do you wish to speak to that? Madam Mayor, I think there's been enough said on this item. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Councillor Nye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd just like to say, if you look up the public records. I was previously against this on a number of occasions. Um, and the argument is, look, if it is in a heritage conservation area, then why why bother with jumping through all the hoops of um, heritage listing it when it's already got a whole bunch of heritage protections? Um, reading through the material a bit more and thinking about it a bit, um, I, I, I know that there's a lot of protections already, um, but I do see that there is some benefit in potentially also listing a property as a heritage item. Um, that way it goes on a register, people spend more time researching it, keeping records of it, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the general level of protection we do have for the heritage of the area is generally lifted up to a higher standard as a result. Um, I. I can sympathize with the experience of buying a property, especially, and then finding out that there's a new heritage listing on it, especially if you're already in an HCA, and that generally is not a great experience. And if we as a council can come up with some sort of solution of um, identifying these things much earlier so that we don't have surprised residents or rude shocks, that would be fantastic. Um, but we, we also have the exact opposite in East Linfield, for example, where quite often some lovely building gets demolished, all the residents are up in arms and then people go, shouldn't that have been protected? So so overall, I, I know I initially last year was against this. Um, and if I had to do it all over again, I probably still would be against it at that point in time. But now we're at a different stage where 
Um, the minister has looked at it, um, has given consent for it to potentially be listed. We've done all this consultation, etc. We've got more evidence. And my point of view now is that let's go ahead and list it if it does have the majority councillor support. So thank you, everyone. I encourage people to vote for this. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? If not, uh, Councillor Clark, would you sum up, please? Um, I reserve my right, Madam Mayor. Thank you. No need to? Or no need, of course, yes, yes. We will finish it at this point. No sum up um, required by Councillor Clark. Therefore, I will put Councillor Clark's motion. All those in favour? That is Councillors Chateau, Smith, Clark, Nye, Pettit, Anderson against. That is Councillors K. Kelly and Spencer, that is carried. Councillors, uh, I think that brings us to the end of the <coughs> business on the agenda. Um, General Manager, extra report circulated to the meeting. There are none, Madam Mayor. Councillors, business without notice, subject to clause 9.3 of the Code of Meeting Practice. None. I will just also alert the council. We have received a message from Councillor Greenfield that she is ill this evening and is unable to join us tonight and seeks uh, leave from the council for her as an apology. Would a councillor be prepared to move accordingly? Councillor Smith has moved. Councillor Kelly has seconded uh, that uh, leave be granted. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you, councillors. There are no questions with notice. We do have inspections uh, with the director uh, like to get back to councillors at a later date with timing for those. Correct, Madam Mayor, that's most appropriate. Thank you, Director. Uh, therefore, there being no further business, I declare the meeting closed at 9.03pm. <laughs>